Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. Here we are at the Koga Tochigi Surugaya. And this is going to be a franchise store. And I absolutely love that they have these displays out in the front. It really sets the mood, the vibe. And before you go into the store proper, um, I guess in the front or before, they have like a little uh, barrier, which you'll see here shortly. But in this section, it's just going to be a lot of the discounted stuff, a lot of the bargain stuff. And it's definitely worth looking through here because you just never know what you're going to find. Here we have a Junk Famicom, 110 yen for this Wario Land manual. That's definitely a great price. All sorts of figures, definitely work, worth uh, looking through here just because you never know what you're going to find. Um, now, a lot, of course, a lot of the good stuff is going to be behind the glass or in the regular stacks. But look at all this. Uh, everything here is 330 yen. And they may, if I remember correctly, they have like, if you buy three, you get a bit of a discount. So there's some pretty good titles in here. And I was kind of, imp I was impressed, not kind of, but I was impressed with uh, some of the Dreamcast games that they had in this section. But you could spend a little bit, I, I, in fact, I did. I spent, a, I spent like a, like a, well, almost an hour before I actually went through this barrier here, through this uh, section. And as you can see, now the thing about Surugaya, is it worthy of the collector? Absolutely yes, because of one of the metrics, which is the sheer amount of stock that they have. I mean, look at this. This is just mainly like the PlayStation stuff. And they had a grand selection in the, in the showcase. The hardware was also um, definitely worthy. Here we have a copy of X3. This is coming in at 5,480 yen, but there are some issues. And I believe, uh, I believe that one was missing the manual. Because, you know, in this day and age, that game is going to be a lot more expensive. We have Batman Returns. And we're going to take a closer look at the games, uh, the stacks, like these areas, in the second episode. Just because there was so much. And uh, this is definitely up there with the, the Surugaya in Tachikawa, Omiya, Oyama, uh, where else? Uh, Konosu. But the thing is... You know, look at the look at the depth. Look at look at all that stuff. And I think I was like the only one um, at the store at the time of filming, which was uh, around midday. Everybody's at work. I'm here game hunting. But look at all this hardware. A lot of great stuff here. But anyhow, let's go ahead and hit it and see. We have twelve thousand seven hundred and thirty there for the AV Famicom in the box. Eight thousand one hundred and ninety there without the box. Now I was in I was in uh, Akihabara a few days ago. It's now the 19th, and I was at Mandarake, and they had an AV Famicom, and that was coming in at 7,000 yen. So definitely leave no stone unturned because you never know what you're gonna find at any given location. And then 23,000 there for the GameCube, and 10,500 yen for this one, which you know some of this stuff is uh, you know it costs money. It's <laughs> obviously it costs money this hobby of ours is expensive no matter what way you look at it even if you're buying and reselling and making that profit to it's never free because you're always uh there's always going to be transportation costs which is huge um you know you have to put in money into it and more importantly time so never 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 fall for that uh trap that, you, that it might be free you're always giving something up and that's just the way the cookie crumbles uh in this day and age for me, um, you know, I buy, sell, trade all the time. That's how I feed uh, the collection, satiate my hunger, and also keep the channel going because transportation costs are definitely... In Japan, it, it's, it, it gets expensive no matter if you're with the, in the car. But anyhow, I'm rambling. Let's focus here on the, on the images at hand. We got some PS2s here. And I definitely want the, the, the first model of PS2, the 10,000 model. I know it's unreliable, but I just love having those early models. And I have this, which is the SPH 1000, 13,200 yen. I paid 50 yen for mine. And then I, I believe it was on uh, on the, what was it? Uh, Facebook Marketplace. Somebody sold me a PlayStation for 500 yen. And it included the SPH 1000 box. And now I have one complete. So that was pure luck. But here we have a PS2. This is the Sakura color. Now this one is very, um, this is steep. Look at the price on this, 16,350 yen. So definitely be careful. And you know, when you come out here, you know, you're planning your trip out to Japan 
you're coming out here or you live in Japan and it's your day off and you're going to be making the long trek out here, have a list. Don't just go with a blind eye. Have a list. Keep true to that list and your budget and your collection will definitely go a lot further. We got a couple of PS3s. That blue one was beautiful, by the way. Here we have a Dreamcast. What's the price here? $8,550 for the one in the orange and then the one in the white coming in at 9000 and some change. I wonder what came first, the orange or the white box? Uh, here we have the Christmas Nights uh, Sega Saturn for 19000 And then the old PSP, 16,600 yen. And guys, I hate to say it, but that's about the average price for that. Although, Book Off. Book Off is definitely... <laughs> Book Off and Furuichi, those two places sometimes surprise me. In fact, I was in Yokohama. I went to the Book Off near, near the station and I picked up one of these PSP uh, Carnival. I got the silver one. It's a 3000 model and I paid just under or about 5000 yen for it. And it was complete in the box and I was totally, uh, totally taken back because that was a great deal. It was a great day and a video will be coming soon. But what do we have here? Dead or Alive Ultimate, 1000 yen. And here is where they kind of just kind of mixed in the hardware with a lot of the limited edition stuff. We got the King of Fighters uh, Plus Pack, 96 and 95. And that does include the RAM cart for 95. And then, well, this is just Shenmue 1 and Part 2, 570 yen. Not too bad, not too bad. And then 1,250. For all Shinmu 2, which includes the Virtual Fighter History Disc. And I'm not really sure what this is. Cosmic Smash for 8,330. Haven't seen that one before, and it comes in a DVD case. And then we have Macross M3. They had a couple of these, 4,210. I remember way, way back, back uh, when the Dreamcast was alive and kicking back in its heyday. I really wanted this game, and I never, I never got around to playing it. And then here we have Jet Grind Radio. Now this is the limited edition for 19,460. Unfortunately, as you can see there on the right hand side, it has some sun fading. And then we have Darius Burst uh, uh, Chronicle Saviors for 5980 That's not too bad of a price. This is going to be for the PlayStation Vita. This is tempting, but I have picked up the game. And I just got the normal, the regular edition. And here's another collector's edition of Dead or Alive 5 Plus for 3360 which isn't a bad price. But I kind of tend to keep away from limited editions just because of the boxes. I like to have the stuff uniform, and being in Japan, I just don't have the space. Here we have some signal something for the DS. And then this beauty, look at this, Ninja Gaiden 3 Collector's Edition for 1,750 yen. And look at the condition of the box. Now I didn't pick this up just because again, I'm not really trying to focus on limited editions. And you know, the game is so-so. Stick with Razor's Edge, here we have Final Fantasy 16 for 38,000. and then. A whole bunch of DS lights and 3DSs, which those DS lights, uh, they're definitely, uh, they're pricey. But that's the cost that you pay for complete in box. Now, in the next episode, as I mentioned, we're going to be taking a look at the stacks. And there was a lot of, there was a great selection here. And this is where I spent the majority of my time. So definitely keep a lookout. Hopefully that will drop sooner than, uh, than this video. I just had uh, some family over, you know, it's that time of year. Just kind of uh, spending time with them, taking a little break from the YouTube. You know how it goes, but we're back. The PC Engine Core Graphics, 22,980 yen. Now, the condition looks fairly um, above average, but definitely a pricey one. And then we have the God of War Ragnarok controller there. And then what do we have here? An Xbox One X and then 5,850 there for the PSP. And then look at the GBAs. 14,000, 13,000, 12,000, 18,000, just kind of all over the map. But that's, that's in today's day and age, that's going to be the average. At least at the Surugaya. And then what do we have here? The Cave Collection on the 360 for 88,000, although the box has a little gash there. And then the Game Boy Light, 35,500 yen. And every time I see those, they're usually scuffed up. They tend to scratch easily. And then 9,980 there for the old handy Game Boy. And 17,800 yen for this one here. So there's some, there's some big issues there. It could be some discoloration there, unfortunately. But it does have the box. And what else do we have here? We got some Switch action. We got some Amiibos. 
Uh, and then next to that, the real gem here is going to be the Sega Mega CD2, 37,100 yen. Definitely pricey, but the condition of the box, absolutely beautiful there. And what do we have? Some Sonic action. Oh, excuse me. And then we have the ASCII pad, the ASCII pad FT, the fighting type for, for 5,240 yen. Now that one had me thinking. I do like my controllers and I don't have that one. This is going to be the PlayStation VR set. A Super CD-ROM for 50,230 yen. Next to that, the Neo CD for, what's the damage here? 20,800 yen. And then below that, we have the old soundtrack for um, Gunstar Heroes. I believe this is for the, well, it's the collection. So it could include the Genesis and the Game Boy Advance sequel. And then 10,000 there for the uh, for the old core graphics. A so Wonder Swan for 13,350 and a PC Engine Duo for 33,700 yen. Now, a wondrous one. I recently, I picked one up yesterday, as a matter of fact, at Mandarake. Beautiful condition, and it was the Swan Crystal for 14,000 yen. That was a great find. I've been wanting one for quite some time, and now I will be looking for Makaimura for Wonder Swan. Here we have some Pocket Monster games. But a great selection here. 28,730 there for Ninja Gaiden and 10,000 for Toshinden on the Game Boy. Now, I did pick up uh, Ninja Gaiden, but just the cart only, nothing crazy like that. And it cost me, what was it, 2,700 yen. Great game, by the way, especially for fans of Ninja Gaiden, which I absolutely love. What else do we have? Pokemon here for the GBA. We got some Castlevania action for 19,980 which, you know, there, there's the collection on the Switch. It's digital. I believe there was also a physical release, but that's probably going to be super expensive now. What else do we have? The Minish Cap for 12000 and 13600 respectively, which I saw at a, at a Wonder Goo. That's another place to keep on your radar for about 7000 which isn't normal in today's day and age, but definitely welcome. And then there's a Metal Slug Advance there. It was for 12000 and some change there. And I'm just kind of going quickly through here because I actually filmed the showcase at the end and my battery was running dry. 7,380 there for the Twilight Princess on the old cube. We got some Rockman action there for the Famicom for 12,800 yen. Now those games, if you just get them loose, definitely for as low as 1,000 yen, sometimes even less. But complete in box, yeah, you're going to be paying. In fact, look at that. Castlevania there. We got the limited run Castlevania for 19980 yen. I wonder how that one fares in the States. Because that is pricey. What do we have? 4270 there for The Legend of Zelda. And Popeye. 20,000 yen. 1983 vintage. I believe that was a launch title for the Famicom. Amazing that it's in that condition. And pretty much uh, getting close to that. 40 year old uh, mark and then castlevania densetsu 24,900 yen 980 and complete with a lot of notes 29,850 there for little nemo and shadow run for the super famicom absolutely beautiful cover 25,330 yen and i'm not really sure what this game is but it's kind of funny how his eyes are just kind of peeking out there we have strike gunner some fire uh, pro wrestling premium and then some kind of uh, board game, Mahjong, maybe. I'm not really sure. And then Sparkster for 32,300 yen. R-Type 3, that one is uh, slowly also rising in price steadily. And we have Rockman X3 for 15,000. And then Hagane for 43,980 yen. My, my, my. And then 43,980 yen again for Turtles in Time. And 39,000 800 in yen for Kiki Kai Kai, Paki and Rocky. And again, um, at a place like Surugaya, that's absolutely normal in this day and age. Uh, what else do we have here? We got some 3DOs. This gonna, looks like an FMB title, an adult title at that. And then we have Knuckles Chaotix for 21,750 with a few old school PC games there. A lot of them for the PC 88. And then we have our old PC Engine titles. We have Kiki Kai Kai for 14,800 yen. Ninja Spirit coming in at the same price. And I picked up Ninja Spirit not too long ago. Great game. And we have Ray Zamber 3 for 17,800 yen. Now that game looks impressive, but 
I hear that it's uh, quite mediocre, but still I would like to try it. But definitely don't want to pay that price. 42,800 yen for the Image Fight X Multiply collection on the Saturn. Now, the um, Irem uh, collection volume one is coming out for PS4, the Switch, I believe PS5 in a couple of days and that's going to have both of those games and then we have gun frontier which is currently out on the switch for eleven thousand. there now the saturn version of gun frontier no good it does away with a lot of the effects found in the original arcade version and three hundred and forty nine thousand eight hundred and fifty yen waku waku 7 for the neo geo aes a great game but my goodness that price that price but you know one way to do it at least this is the way i do it and i've been doing it for for like ever since i've been in the 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 gaming scenes which is from day one pretty much is buy sell trade that's the way to do it and it you don't feel the sting as hard <laughs> but anyhow we got the x uh xbox 360 titles always nice to see these especially behind the glass with mushihime sama being a great title, 12,500 yen. And I believe the Switch port is based off of the 360 version. Here we have these games. And these ones are, it's the same game, different covers. And originally a Super Famicom game. At least I think it's the same game. It could be a sequel. Then we have Cheesy Mouse for 16,500 yen. And then Kun Something for 36,800 yen. That's going to be a shooter. And again, that's going to be what to, the price to be expected at Surugaya. And then mind you, when you're out here, they'll definitely open up the case. You can check it out before you buy. Check out the condition, see what's up. And a lot of this stuff is uh, it's pretty clean. We got some Michael Jackson, Ranger X, and then look at that. Both Battle Manias with the sequel coming in at 129,880 yen, complete with some notes. And then Gunstar Heroes for 17,530. That is a little bit... It's a little bit much for my blood, but that's just the way it goes nowadays. And then 13,900 yen for Outrunners there. And two copies of that. Pretty cool. Super Street Fighter 2, 4,580. I definitely want a copy of that on the old Jenny. Or the old Mega Drive, as they call it here. But their Mega Drive selection, absolutely beautiful. Uh, 16,500 yen there for Splatterhouse Part 2, which is actually... It's reasonable. In this day and age, that is reasonable. 21980 there for, for Rocket Knight Adventures, which is on the little bit on the lower side, at least compared to what you see in Tokyo, and then 19800 for one of those uh, Sonic & Knuckle, Knuckles uh, copies. And then here, the last bit of case is going to be for limited edition stuff, and a few Game Boy Micro accessories, and then we have a pocket there for 8000 920 yen but guys in the second episode we're gonna take a look at the stacks and let me tell you there was a lot a lot a lot of temptations there in those stacks i absolutely did enjoy this store this is my second time here and i'll probably come return at a different point but i hope to have the second video out a lot sooner i was out on vacation but now we're back so stay tuned more to come ciao